Is this a drill or something? I will never let my friends get hurt again. Predictions of Ezra's almost inevitable turn to the dark side in Star Wars Rebels have been rife throughout the series, though when he was first introduced you couldn't help draw parallels to Disney's Aladdin in appearance and demeanor being a somewhat lovable streetwise Lothrat. Move along, Lothrat. Sorry, sorry, not looking for trouble. One jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword, I steal only what I can afford. But his appearance has changed drastically over the seasons, and the show's tone has gone from ragtag rebellion and misadventures to battling a rising tide of the unstoppable military might of the Empire, the dark side's presence ever looming. And after the introduction and fall of numerous inquisitors, fans and myself alike have seen the foreshadowing of Vader's apprentice appearing as the ultimate dark side adherent behind Vader for the rebels to face. And why not? Sam Witt where himself, the actor behind Starkiller, also voices Darth Maul actively in the series and the Emperor in Rebels. I don't fear you. Then you will die braver than most. What if Starkiller isn't in fact returning as we know it, and Ezra is doomed to be Vader's apprentice for a time much like Starkiller? Now, that would be undoubtedly the hardest fight for the Rebels ever, fracturing their resolve and emotionally just breaking Kanan, though it doesn't necessarily have to be Vader training Ezra, as we've already seen more pulling at the thread of Ezra's resolve. Now, the biggest victory for the Empire would be crush the rebels, but internally. I need someone who sees a bigger picture. Thrawn himself would be a perfect candidate at orchestrating Ezra's downfall and destroying the rebels from within. Now here are some definite parallels to the original Starkiller and Ezra, which shows that he may be more of a reimagining of Galen Marek for new canon. Number one is Kanan's Padawan is Ezra, whereas Starkiller was Ram Koda's Padawan, which Kanan and Ram are no doubt just a combination of Kyle Katarn and Ram Koda. Number two is, just like Starkiller, Ezra is constantly on the brink of the light and dark, unsure which side to actually choose. Number three, both Ezra and Starkiller are exceptionally powerful in the Force. Four, both of them end up helping the Rebels in their early formation days. The only real differences between Ezra and Starkiller is the age difference, which they're starting to bridge, and which side of the Force they actually started on. They reverse that somewhat. At last. A fight that might be worthy of my time. Why I believe this makes sense is with the Grand Inquisitor's demise, all that we were left with were these nameless Inquisitors, which in contrast were dispatched pretty easily by the rebels. They were almost like saber fodder by the end. I mean, Chopper killed one. That, that's almost enough said. And the Grand Inquisitor showed definite interest in taking Ezra to Vader alive, if possible, as well as Vader himself seen in their first encounter. He definitely saw the potential in Ezra and was maybe thinking, I have these Inquisitors, but this one is far more powerful. Maybe I can shape him into something more of an apprentice to help me overthrow the Emperor, which of course is the way of the Sith. Now, I touched on Ram Koda before. Now, Freddie Prince Jr. himself, who voices Kanan Jarrus in Rebels, has outlined the similarities between Kanan and Ram Koda. The most obvious is his recent blinding in Rebels, much like Starkiller's master. Kanan was a pretty severe drunk before Rebels, and we saw that in the novel A New Dawn, whereas Ram Koda, again, if we flip it, he became a drunk after we saw him post Order 66 as well. And with the darker tones foreshadowing Season 3 of Rebels, I think it's safe to say by the end of Season 3, a Ghost crew member is probably going to be killed, and I believe it will be Hera, which will move this whole storyline, with Hera being the best pilot of the Ghost crew, and Grand Admiral Thrawn being this season's main villain. I definitely think Thrawn will play a hand in Hera being killed, as we've seen a brief, intense moment between Hera and Thrawn just recently, which kind of opened up the idea of what is going to happen. It looks like she's captured. Now this no doubt will break Kanan if it happens and he'll be more like Ram Koda when he became the drunk hobo who almost gave up all hope of defeating the Empire. He's blinded, the despair he would give into would be poison for teaching Ezra anything and it would throw Ezra off the rails as Hera is kind of the motherly figure that is keeping them together. She's really the glue. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. 
Sabine has been seen with the Darksaber, and I believe that she has to kill Maul to take up the mantle of Mandalore in the process, and this is where Ezra would become more of a reckless Dark Jedi, similar to Starkiller, because obviously she's taking up this war effort, and she'll probably have to be forced to help out her people more. Ezra is going to obviously lose a bit of guidance. Now, in Season 3, Kanan may lose the ability to train Ezra when he loses all his focus, and this is shown that there is going to be more forcible contact with Maul and the Sith Holocron, which is already way too much temptation with a strong master with you. You gotta think back in the old Jedi days, there is no way in hell that they would let an apprentice play with a Sith Holocron. Now, Maul has made no illusions that he wants Ezra's power for his own. He wants to guide him. And we'll probably see some Sith training from Maul. He was already planting the Sith code into Ezra in the end of season two, and he's just gonna further push that narrative and try and turn him against the crew. And again, you've got Thrawn who's trying to tear them up internally. I think that there is going to be a lot of people coming with their own motives and really it's going to put this pressure on Ezra. Only someone with the courage to risk oblivion is worthy to claim it. Inevitably at some point when Sabine claims the title of Mandalore she has to kill Maul. This will either cause Ezra to turn against Sabine and Kanan or he'll realize his wrongs and try to go back to the light but still he could be a great dark Jedi and we've seen that difference between the two with the Bender. Now without Darth Maul to guide Ezra in the dark side and without Kanan, who's given up hope of defeating the Empire and gone off the deep end because of Hera's death, I think Ezra will be left without any guidance from his former dark side and light side teachers. This will be the end of season three, even though there's so much tragedy that has just befell the rebels, that it will actually push the relationship between Ezra and Sabine together because Sabine will take up this big mantle, Ezra will be losing himself, and I think this will actually bond them together somewhat. And then in season four, it may start off with Ezra being all grown up and the captain of Ghost and Ezra. Ezra will be a dark Jedi, kind of like Starkiller, have the role where Kanan is the Ram Coder we see, and Sabine is kind of Ezra's girlfriend, and have a leadership role like Hera. Sabine's really coming into her own. Ezra is just going between the light and dark. I don't know if Vader is really going to get to him. That will be the biggest turn, is if Vader can convince Ezra when he's lost enough that the dark side is what can help him save his friends or loved ones. Really just poignant if that's where Ezra's gonna go. Zeb and Chop will still be around, but I think that they will be kind of side story and take a backseat to Kanan, who's going to be part of the crew, but he's so broken like Ram Coda and be like Cyclops in the X-Men movies after Jean Grey supposedly died. Kanan not giving a crap about anything. I think he's just going to end up a bitter old man. And in season four, Ezra and Sabine's relationship will have a lot of problems because Sabine will be torn between leading her people as Mandalore and maybe helping the rebels. If the big guy catches you, he'll end you. Kanan himself will come around. I think that he will go through another despair period, but he's going to either have to sacrifice himself or pull himself out of a hole to guide Ezra. Now, this is where Ezra may completely go to the dark side in the end of season four, and Kanan will get out of his bleak outcome. If it does pan out that way, Kanan and Sabine will have to battle against Darth Vader and Ezra together in season four in a season finale. I think that that's where we have to go. He turns for some point, he's got to go under Vader, and it's, it's a culmination of these teachings, the light and the dark, you know, as we hear from the Bendu. So I think that season three is really posturing us up for that and that loss and tragedy has to be done in such a way that it's not just throwing it in our face, but that Hera herself, her loss would be just echo through the series and it has to take a full season to do so. We already know that Rebel season four is being recorded and then I think that we will end on five where Ezra comes back. He cannot defeat Vader and you cannot just keep having Vader get beat up by Ahsoka. So that leaves them in a really strange position, but the best outcome that is purely against speculation, whatever happens to the Rebels, I would love to see Ezra come back or survive, played by Benicio Del Toro in Star Wars Episode 8. That would be the best outcome. You know, Benicio Del Toro, whatever character he plays in the movie, will be fantastic. So I think that that's something that would be really, really cool to see. Now, this is just my speculation as to the parallels that I'm drawing from the Force Unleashed universe. It's pretty easy to see that Ram Coda, uh, Freddie Prince has said it himself, we're starting to see maybe a, a Juno role come out of this if Sabine steps into that kind of position. The Mandalore warrior aspect is really cool, and I'm 100% sure that that's going to happen 
them, but I think that the romance narrative is going to be played out and there's been nods to it, but as they mature in age, that will happen. And I think that Ezra's skirting the light in the dark and actually fully immersing himself in the dark side is something that is inevitable. But the beauty of this video is it is just the start of the discussion. Our love for Star Wars surrounds and it binds us together. So let me know in the comments below, do you believe there's a chance Ezra could be the next Star Killer? Because if you love Star Wars, I want to talk to you about it. It's as simple as that, my friends. If you want to stay up to date with the latest Star Wars videos on origins, games, and theories, don't forget to use those force powers of yours and hit subscribe. And hey, leave a comment below about what you want to see in future videos. It may just get covered. Thanks for watching, and may the force be with you. Always.